Welcome back to the web blog of Ovinandi. I'm still focusing on this textbook, which I would like to recommend to all students of languages and also of students interested in neurobiology of linguistics and psychology and language. The front cover here you see the famous Swiss mountains Eiger, Mönch and Jungfrau. I chose these mountains because of um, several reasons. One reason is that my grandmother, her birthplace was quite near to this scenery. And also, um, I knew this scenery from various excursions in the Bernese Oberland and especially also in Grindelwald where we skied. But um, to give a more um, general uh, answer, the mountain ranges in Switzerland um, separate different dialects, sometimes also even languages. And from this vivid example of uh, dialect diversity, as it is known here in Switzerland, or I know also from other countries like Sweden and uh, Bengal, but um, of course, it's an almost universal phenomenon that below the rank of languages, there are also dialects or accents. Now, um, if we figure out uh, ancient Indo-Europeans, uh, their uh, position could have been a similar one like uh, in Switzerland where the first primeval dialects of Slavic, Baltic, Germanic, Albanic and all these roots um, were only um, dialects of one proto-language, proto-European and maybe there was uh, mostly on, only differences in vowels as opposed to the more um, progredient feature of consonant shifts. Uh, we already spoke about genetics of Khoisans and Nala Saharans and Pygmy languages, the Afroasiatic branch and out of Africa migration, and also about Dini Caucasian languages. Here I would like to give an overview over another branch of Indo uh, of uh, Eurasiatic. So Eurasiatic is really a large, large phylum, starting uh, maybe with Davidian, going through Kartvelian, European, Finno-Ugric, Samoyedic, macro altaic Eskim Aleut and Kamchatkin. Um, so uh, even Amerindian uh, might have uh, contacts to Eurasian and a large um, other phylum on the continent would be the Denicocation on the Eurasiatic continent. And then towards Southeast Asia, also the Austric languages. <clears throat> yes, and Finn Ulrich is really very, very interesting because it seems that Finnish has a more ancient grammatical structure than in European. Um, for instance, word roots like Vesi for water. If they are flected to other cases, not only the endings change, but also the word root. And according to my brother, Didip Nandi, who also did and does linguistic studies, especially in difficult non-European languages like Finnish and 
Hebrew, Turkish, Armenian, Georgian, Buruszaski, Basque. And I'm amazed by his knowledge, also a little bit of Sami. And um, Finnish um, is a quite a large phylum, the Finno Ugric languages, having probably their origin in southern Siberia around the endings of the last glacial um, period, the worm glaciation, as it is called in Middle Europe. And it seems that Finno-Ugrian speakers have had contact to Indo-Europeans for a very long time. So in Finnish there are long words from Proto-Indo-European, but also maybe from uh, Iranian, and then also from Old High German. So this might reflect the migrational history of both uh, Indo-European as well as Phenoric, because uh, in primordial times, Indo-European homeland should have been between Caspian and the Black Sea, whereas Phenoric might have been slightly more to the north, but within a contact zone. So Finnish languages are still spoken in western, northwestern Russia and are uh, to some extent uh, a substratum and uh, there have, must have been also a language shift from Finnic speakers towards Slavic. And um, still uh, some of these Finnish uh, languages are vivid and um, Estonian and Finnish and Sami are maybe the most well-known Finnish languages. The Ugrian connection is a very ancient one. I read a publication quite lately where um, Hungarians uh, seemed to originate as an independent population uh, somewhere even towards Hindu Kush, but this is really a very, uh, very distant hypothesis. It would have to be proven much more thoroughly with the means of human genetics or archaeological findings. Um, it's also very interesting that uh, I read a paper in Nature, uh, maybe three years back, that the first um, fair-haired um, Caucasians lived around 17,000 years before now, and um, these were probably the first blonde humans and um, as we spoke about this contact zones between the Finno Green and Indo-European uh, we have to be aware that both of these people populations carried um, blonde haired individuals so there is really a good question for scientists um, to trace back the origin of these fair-haired Europeans uh, to either Indo-Europeans or Finno-Greek speakers. I hope you enjoyed these insights and I will upload this file now.